If you're brushing up on your math, statistics, research methods, this video will helpfully give you a memorable and fun way to think about the different types of variables, and you'll have to watch and find out why cows are the theme of this video. There are four main types of variables or categories. Independent and dependent are the classic that people learn about the most, but there's also extraneous and control. I'm a big believer in working smarter, and so instead of just rote memorization, I encourage you to find an acronym that works for you. For this video, we're going to use I don't eat cows to remember independent, dependent, extraneous, and control. Let's start with the two big ones, independent and dependent. I'll give a uh, more examples as we go ahead, but for now, here are just some definitions and memory tricks. The independent variable is the thing that the researcher changes, controls, or manipulates within the experiment. The way I remember this is that the independent variable is often the intervention. Since I'm in the social science, social work field, it's usually some maybe some kind of psychological or educational intervention. Then the dependent variable is the result essentially, or like what changes. It's something that is like an outcome, impact, or effect. And that's what happens with the dependent variable. It depends on whether the independent variable exists. So the dependent variable changes depending on what's going on with the independent variable. So let's look at an example to show this. Say our research question, okay, some bonus research methodology terms. Our research question is, does listening to classical music make plants grow faster? So perhaps our hypothesis would be that plants will grow faster when they listen to classical music than when they don't have any tunes to jam out to. And that would mean that the null hypothesis, which basically says that there's no statistical significance, is saying that, no, nah, there's going to be no impact. Music is not going to make a difference on how our plants grow. So say we design our experiment where we have two house plants, the same type of plants, they start out around the same size and you put them in two separate rooms in your house. One where you blast, you know, some Beethoven beats and the other one just kind of sits in silence. Your independent variable would be the type of music that's played or whether there is or is not music. And the dependent variable would be the plant height. And more bonus vocab, music would be a qualitative variable, whereas the height of the plant, since it's numerical, is going to be a quantitative variable. So let's just say hypothetically that the plant in the music room grows an inch taller than the plant in the no music room during the study period. Therefore, classical music causes plants to grow faster, right? Case closed. Nailed it. Well, no, not so fast, because we need to consider the other two types of variables in the I don't eat cows uh, scenario, and that is extraneous and control. Extraneous variables basically present an alternative reason that there is a change in the dependent variable other than the independent variable. It's often an accident or something unforeseen. So I remember this by thinking that the extraneous is an extra explanation, often unexpected. And then you have control variables, which are very similar. They're also kind of an alternative, another factor that plays into the results. Um, but they are things that the researcher tends to have more control over and is thinking about and foreseeing these ahead of time. So going back to our plant experiment with the music, some examples of control variables would be the amount of water used. Are you using the same amount of water? Because if one happened to get more water than the other, that could explain the difference in the height of the plant. Or the type of water, right? Did you use just regular old tap water? Or what did you use? You know, did you have any filtering in your water? Did they have equal access to sunlight? You know, maybe the music room is brighter than the no music room. And the temperature being controlled the same in each room, even like the soil, is they have the same amount of soil that they started in, um, you know, the pH level, all of that. So those would all be control variables that the researchers should think about in order to increase the validity of their findings and to make sure that really it was just this one independent variable that made the difference and not some of these control variables. 
But you also have to keep in mind that there could be extraneous variables that pop up there too that you might not have you know, thought about before when you were controlling your experiment. So maybe there is a bug or you know, fungus infestation of some kind, some aphids get on your plant, something like that. Or there can be a number of other errors, like say we had a shady research assistant who lost the key to the second room and you know never watered the no music room one, but just didn't tell us, right? Or the thermostat broke in one of the rooms and so it ended up hotter or colder, or maybe the window seal was um, old and defective and so one room was more humid than the other. So thinking about what are some alternative explanations and when I publish or share the results of this study, can I really prove that it is the independent variable that made the difference? So is it really the music that impacted the plant height rather than some of these other things? Here's another fun example. Say our research question is, does feeding a cow a milk bed, the little Hershey's candies, make it produce more milk, right? I mean, they're, you know, like little milk medicine, right? <laughs> so imagine we have one group of cows they're randomly selected, okay, like a randomized controlled trial. And we have one group of cows that is um, eating, you know, gets fed a milk dud as a little treat every day. And a group of cows that don't get any yummy candy snacks. And then we see what is the milk output between the two of them. And does eating milk duds make them produce more milk? So the independent variable here would be the milk dud. That's the, the change, the intervention that we're doing. And then the dependent variable is the quantity of milk produced. How many cups of milk does the cow produce in a day, for example? Now, I'm no farmer, but I assume that there are some factors that would certainly impact dairy cow production. So that could include the quantity and quality of the other food that they're given and the drinking water. Are they all eating and drinking the same amount in both groups? Do they get the same medications or any growth hormones? Cow's gender, again, I'm no farmer, but I'm pretty sure female cows probably produce more milk than male cows, right? Um, and cows that are, you know, have just had a baby, you know, a new mommy cows are gonna produce more. So just thinking, and these are really basic things, right? But just making sure that all these different factors that we can conceptualize that could change the outcome are controlled for those control variables. Uh, and then say looking at the extraneous side, you know, let's assume that these are happy free range cows, you know, frolicking around in a meadow. So we might not be able to control whether the cow who ate the milk duds um, is maybe, you know, trotting around their enclosure more, maybe because of the milk dead, they got a sugar rush and now they're running laps around the pen and all that cardio makes them healthier and that makes them produce more milk. Um, or it could just be genetics or, you know, maybe that one of your researchers was, you know, a rogue, you know, PETA person and, and they're saying that, uh, you know, milk duds aren't good for cows and so they're secretly not giving anybody the milk duds, right? So there could be things like that that are extraneous variables that could impact your results as well. Now, moving more to a social science perspective of some real experiments that you might actually do, let's look at medications, right? There's often trials to determine how effective medications are compared to either placebo or no treatment or an alternative treatment, like say cognitive behavioral therapy. So try this yourself. Imagine we're doing a trial to measure how effective the medication fluoxetine Prozac is in treating major depressive disorder. So pause the video. Seriously, you can't learn to ride a bike simply by watching a video about bikes. You've got to practice pedaling yourself. So take a minute and jot down what you think the independent, dependent, control, and extraneous variables might be. Let's compare notes here. I said the independent variable would be the antidepressant drug, the Prozac. The dependent variable would be the participant's self-report of mood, for example. This, there could be many things, but this is just an idea here. One control variable could be the dosage, making sure that everyone is getting either the same dosage or the, um, the right dosage as maybe a percentage of their body weight or kind of figuring out those factors so the dosing is equitable between the participants. Other control variables could be the severity of the depression. 
Are we only selecting people who have very mild cases or very severe cases, or is there a mix of both? We can also control time. Um, you know, how, how long is the study taking and that it's the same amount of time in the control group versus the intervention group. And then extraneous variables could include medication not adherence. So unless you're physically watching people and making sure that they, you know, take the pill and swallow it, um, maybe there could be some medication non-adherence where people are not taking the medication as prescribed. They're missing doses or doubling up or things like that. And likewise with our cow example, other extraneous variables could be a person's genetics and a number of other things. Final example here, imagine that in a prison setting, someone starts a program to help the individuals who are incarcerated get their GEDs if they had not completed high school. And the goal is to um, help them have more job opportunities when they're ultimately released in the community with the ultimate goal of reducing recidivism. So take a moment and think what would be the independent and dependent variables and what else is at play here? In this case, the program, including you know, the curriculum, the actual intervention itself of the education program to do the GED thing, is the independent variable. The dependent variable could be recidivism rates, right? How many of the people who complete this program end up back in prison in a certain given amount of time? Some control variables could include the instructor, because if you have a really fantastic instructor who's teaching, you know, one or, or doing, you know, tutoring or things like that, and then someone who's not so great, there's going to be some different results there. So maybe it's the same person or there's a set level of training that they all have to complete. And other extraneous variables could include how many jobs are available when this person goes back into the community or the location of the release. You know, is it a big city with lots of opportunities or a more rural area? How's the economy and how many jobs are available? The influence of family and friends. Uh, maybe this person, you know, while they were incarcerated found uh, spirituality or they, um, you know, became a, a Tai Chi enthusiast and now they have a new purpose in life. And it was, you know, not the GED that did the trick, but it was, you know, this other experience that they had during their time incarcerated. So think about some other examples. I encourage you to write out some ideas of different trials or experiments, research that could be done and consider what the different variables might be.